What's going on with everybody? It's your boy <coughs> Eric, aka Young God, coming to you live in this green dungeon, giving it to you real, real rugged. Um, just want to let everybody know I got a little cold, so it might be <coughs> through a lot of this. But I got somebody on Facetime. I'm gonna let her introduce herself. Uh, who do we have? I am porn star Mayweather porn Google fuck me triple X. How you doing today, uh, Mrs. Gogo? <laughs> I'm good. It's Miss Gogo, and I'm Mrs. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Miss Gogo, how you doing today? You say you're doing good? I'm good, yep. Uh, yes, Um, I just want to let you know that you are the second porn star I interviewed, so um, hopefully this goes well. Um, uh, I interviewed Sugar Hill. You know what it is? She's a little older. She like in her 50s. She, you know what I'm saying? She like one of them old freaks, you know what I'm saying? That's what's out of her, man. <laughs> oh, I'm a milf, so what do you mean? You ain't 50. You know what I'm saying? She was, you know what I'm saying? She was, she was on her. You know how old? I feel like there's a difference between old freaks and like younger freaks. You know what I'm saying? I feel like old freaks are really freaked out. I don't feel like younger girls are really that. You know what I'm saying? What about the in between? Because I'm a millennial. You millennial? That's what, you're young. A millennial is young still. No, you don't think so? I'm, a, I'm on the older side of millennial though. Um. I think millennial tops out at 35. I'm not 35, but I'm not 21. So you young. If you're not 35, you're still young. Yeah. I'm talking about, like, if you're about 47, I mean, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like older chicks eat butt and, like, just do a lot of crazy shit, you know what I'm saying? Young girls do that, too. Yeah, yeah, young girls eat, but, I mean, I feel like I'll find an older girl to eat my booty or I'll find a young girl to eat my booty, you know what I'm talking about? I mean, I ain't getting my booty ate. I'm just throwing it out there, but I'm just saying. I mean, shit, that's how. Hey, man, these interviews are more like conversations, so that's that's how we're gonna treat them, man. But um, yeah, that's that's a nice way to start this conversation off. Eating booty. You like? Do you eat booty? Uh. <laughs> it depends. What does it depend on? If it's my food, like if it's if it's okay. If it's your booty. So are we talking about a guy or a girl? Um, a guy. I have. You like it? I don't see anything wrong with it. It's just when it's a guy, I have to groom it. Why don't you have to groom the woman's butt? Because we usually already groom it. So when niggas we shave our when we shave our kitty cat, we usually just a couple swipe swipes back there, and we're good to go. You know. So so, so niggas don't groom their booty. Niggas don't groom their booty. That's a fact. I mean, my sister. They groom their whole front and they leave a whole situation back there. So, uh, you know, you can't just, just like, you know, just because guys suck toes don't mean they suck everybody toes, you know? I feel that, I feel that. You get what I'm saying? So, I mean, I'm not going to deny <laughs> that I've, you know, I've eaten booty before, but, you know, not everybody could get that pleasure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, no, nah, nah, my buddies. And, and there's a whole bunch of girls out there denying this whole booty. Thing and niggas mostly be denying this booty thing. We fuck that. Nah, I'm gonna come clean. If a girl ever eat my booty, she's disgusting. Like, my butt is crazy. Like, I mean, I got a fucking Amazon Safari back there. The shit is crazy. I don't shave down there because I don't want it's just weird. Like, I don't want to bend over and it's just that's, that's weird, man. So, I'm good on getting my so booty ate. Weirder than you taking a shit in the Amazon forest? Um, I mean. Me taking a boo boo, me taking a boo boo, and me shaving my booty is completely different. That's not even the same thing. Cleaner if you shave it. I mean, I I, I use wipes. You know what I'm saying? So it's more clean. I don't care. <laughs> I'm pretty sure eighty percent of the men you come in contact with do not shave their butt. So that's, that's a little little fun fact. Give them the booty treatment with my mouth or my face. What else is the booty treatment without your face or your mouth? I got a question about that. So if a nigga asks you, I got a question about that. So if a nigga say, if a nigga say, damn, go, go, I'm trying to spice it up. You know what I'm saying? Put a little two fingers back there. You know what I'm saying? Would you think he's a little gay? Every guy that I've ever dealt with has let me do it. Every, any guy that I have ever, other than a movie, other than a movie, mm -hmm. because, you know, that's, you just, I get paid to do what I do. But any guy that has personally messed with me and I might be, getting in trouble saying this but any guy that i've messed with on a personal um they've never asked me for it and i've never asked permission but they've always allowed me to do it 
Damn, so you mess with a lot of fruity niggas. That's crazy. Um, yeah, so, that's, that's, I mean, yeah, that's what that's all I like, man. You mess with a lot of fruity. That's crazy, man. That's crazy, man. <laughs> You'd be surprised who the fruity niggas are out there then. But I don't think they're fruity if they let you do that. I don't think so. I think gay means that you see a man and you're attracted to a man. But these men, they see me, which I'm the epitome of what, you know, I'm the prototype, I think, of what a sexy female looks like you know and i think that sometimes if you get a guy to the certain point you know if it feels good it feels good you know they don't want to talk about it afterwards you get what i'm saying but you know i mean it happened so you know niggas out there watching it that been with me it happened that's crazy, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> you know how emasculated i would feel watching the interview like damn she did put a figure up my booty <laughs> I tried to forget about that, man. That's that's crazy. You said you are the prototypical thing of what a sexy woman is. What is your definition of a sexy woman? Um, I think a sexy woman is someone who knows herself and is okay with herself. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like right now, I'm going through this thing where I gained ten pounds, right? And a lot of people can't tell that I gained ten pounds, and they're like, "Well, are you gonna go to the gym? Are you gonna get lipo? Are you gonna?" Do girls do and I'm like you know what I'm cool with me I think I'm sexy I think that I'm fine you know and I think that that makes a woman sexy when she gives a fuck about herself I'm not saying go ahead and gain 100 pounds and shit like that and be unhealthy but I think when a woman looks in the mirror and she's like mm-hmm, you know that's sexy and then she's going to care for herself whether it's I'm not saying putting a weave on or putting a wig on or she's going to get her natural style done. She's going to do whatever she's because she loves this. So I think really sexy isn't a physical thing. And I know that's cliche. Well, you're beautiful on the inside. No, but I think once you feel that you're beautiful on the inside, then you do this. You know what I'm saying? Then you you work on this, you know, Um, because ain't nothing... You've seen a lot of pretty girls, but ain't nothing worse than a pretty girl that's like, well, I'm fat here, and I'm, and I'm, and then they don't want to, you know, you see a pretty girl where you're like, damn, if you just took care of yourself a little bit, you'd be bad. Yeah, yeah, you definitely, know? definitely, definitely, definitely. That's because they don't have, they don't think they sexy, so it's coming out. They're not sexy. I mean, I just want to say, first of all, shout out to you, because you just, speaking of beautiful, you, you got on your makeup, you got your hair done, you looking all good, I got my bonnet on, I just got the shower, I don't got no underwear on, I'm doing this, like, I'm, I'm just all resting this shit right now. <laughs> I'm sitting at my makeup station right now. Okay. Like, <laughs> okay. Hold. On, I got a question. So I think I know where you're from, but I want you to say because I might be wrong. Where are you from? Brooklyn. You say you're from New York. All right. So can I tell you my problem? I'm from Philly. I thought you was from New York. I thought you was from New York. Okay. But I want to. Um. I want to um, tell you my problems with New York women. Can I do that real quick? I got a lot of problems. I got problems with New York people in general. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just. I'm gonna stick to women real quick. Um, first of all, it's a lot of fine behind women out in New York, but I always think that every girl <clears throat> that's too fine is something wrong with them. So I was on this girl Instagram. I was like, she too fine. There's gotta be something wrong with her. I'm like, she crazy. She something. So I'm going through a page and I find she's from New York and I'm like, oh, that's what's wrong with her. She's from New York. <laughs> you know? So let me tell you my problem with y'all. Y'all are just overly aggressive for no reason. Um, I don't know if you can talk to this. I don't know if you're aggressive. Yeah, yeah, go go ahead and hit the blunt. Let me talk, man. So I know a lot of girls from, from New York, and like they just they say nigga a lot. Like they like niggas. They be like, no fuck out of here, nigga, nigga. What the fuck is you talking about, nigga? And it just like calm your ass down, man. So please explain to me why y'all ass so goddamn just crazy, man. Because I'm a Florida nigga, so I'm not used to that. Time out, time out. I'm from Brooklyn. That makes me the cockiest, most aggressive girl there is from New York. Man. Okay, no, the most aggressive girl there is. From is from the Bronx, but they're not like this, right? They're they're rough. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not because I don't want to talk about New Yorkers, but they're rough. But we already know the pretty girls come from Brooklyn and Queens, okay? So my thing is, um, I've traveled so much because I was in foster care. So I've traveled so much that everyone says when I'm from New York, most of the time they go, other than my accent, you know, being a, a Puerto Rican Brooklyn girl you know um they don't think i'm from new york they say you're a lot nicer than new york people yeah. you're a lot nicer than new york girls. you're a lot more humble but that's just because i'm well traveled so even though i say i'm from new york you know i'm really not from anywhere because i lived in puerto rico i lived in jamaica i live every you get what i'm saying i was 
very indigent, you know, so I was pushed from family member to family member. Delaware, I went to college in Philadelphia, so when I did porn when I was in college, that's why people think I'm from Philly, because I blew up being in Philly. But um, I've lived in Atlanta before, you know, I mean, it's, I live in Baltimore, so I don't think that I have a personality that fits just one place. So I am a nicer New Yorker, but you are right, they are very aggressive. But think about how much it is to live in New York. You know, like, like, if they say you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. Damn right. That's exactly true. If you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. So we have, we're fighters. We have to be like that, you know? So I think that it translates just into everything that we do. For example, I talk at people. Like, I sound like I'm probably yelling or being aggressive when I talk, but I'm Puerto Rican. Mm. We talk at people. Like, this is how we talk. We, when we talk in Spanish, you know, like, that's just how we talk. So, you know... That, that's just what it is so you know I think that just New Yorkers it's just a cultural thing we talk at people and we're very aggressive but we're fighting every single day we're, we're pushing every single day you know so we do that in everything that we do okay. I guess that would make sense so why y'all so over the top and extra sometimes but um no nah, I think New York definitely has like a lot of beautiful women I'm from Florida and I think Miami got some lot of fine women but it's up there, man. It's like y'all got some, y'all got some baddies. So I, I give it to y'all in that uh, department right there. But you said that you started um your porn career in college or whatnot in Philly. Um, how did you actually come up with the name Go Go Fuck Me? Um, honestly, it was just anything that I was doing in porn at the time just had to be over the top. So I had like a couple stories of where I got like Go Go from. I got Go Go from mm-hmm. Kill Bill. I got Fuck Me from Fuck You, Fuck Me from the Austin Powers movie. Like, all these other things. But honestly, you know, um, then people say, because I'm a go-go music kind of person. I'm not really a hip-hop person. I like techno and go-go music. So then they say, oh, you're go-go because you do go-go. And it's like, um, you know, honestly, it was just, I liked it. It may, It's like my tattoos. People ask me about my tattoos. What do they mean? What do they mean? I have over 200 tattoos. Most of them don't mean shit. I just liked it, you know? So, um... I just wanted a name that, you know, I was told that big name girls always have a first and a last name. Mm-hmm. So I wanted two names. And then I just wanted something mm-hmm. like Pinky, you know, like Pinky, like that stands out, right? Yeah. Like I wanted a name that wasn't a name. Not Alyssa, not Jenna, not Veronica. I didn't want a name, name. Okay. I wanted something that wasn't mm-hmm. a name. So when they hear it, they're like, you know. A thing that I, I always think about porn stars, um, especially like uh, the women, pre-porn do you think that well no not pre i'll ask you that next do you think to be a porn star a, a successful porn star that you have to love sex no no because the girl sugar hill she said that you do so you said no so i want to know why you think so i don't love sex you don't love sex no because i would imagine like my philosophies on love you look at me like i was crazy go ahead <laughs> <laughs> No, I think that, um, you know, well, a little bit about me, I'm a third generation husband and hoe, okay? So my grandma was a streetwalker, my mom was on drugs, and she, you know, did her thing. So for me, I work smarter, not harder. You know, I, I did safe away, you know, I became a porn star. But one thing I grew up with was sex was always a product that everyone was always going to want to buy. And I grew up as a hustler. So, you know, when I do a movie or when I'm, you know, escorting or something like that, you know, I don't even really feel like it's sex. Hmm. It's like a it's like a boxing match, right? So a fighter, you know, he might love fighting, but does that mean that they're out here in the streets fighting all the time and picking fights, you know? It's his sport. So it's a sport to me, you know? I love the hustle. I love the game. I love being recorded. That's a fetish of mine. You know, I get turned on when I'm being recorded doing it. But, um, you know, I'm known for saying, I'm known for, I'm like the female Wesley Pipes. I'm known for talking shit, talking crazy, and riding dick. Those are, those are the things that people want to see when I do a porn. So, literally, I just think of, like, some of the dumbest shit, craziest shit that I could say and do, the craziest positions that I could say and do, and then I go ahead and act it out. So, I like the acting, I like being recorded, and I like my money. Well, like I was going to ask, pre-porn, would you be considered, 
like a hoe like like while you're in high school or early college will people be like oh yeah she be she be fucking everybody i didn't fuck everybody i was scared of the day i didn't start fucking until i graduated high school mm. You know, I mean, you know what? No, I thought I was a lesbian. But I thought I was a lesbian, and I got with this girl who broke my heart. And I'm not going to give her no shine because she a bum now. But anyway, she, uh, because I was afraid of penetration. I was, because in my mind, when I saw porn, you know, I saw it, that it was so big. Like, in my head, I was like, how does that go in there? Like, I was afraid of that. Um, I got picked on a lot, though, because... I went to a lot, I was a new girl all the time. I went to like four different high schools. Like I was the new girl all the time. My English wasn't that good. You know, well, my grammar wasn't that good. I was poor. I didn't dress well. I smelled funny. I was told they threw rocks at me and shit. So, I mean, I wasn't the girl that you would even really think was doing anything or no one really thought to do anything with me. Um, I think later on when I've kind of developed maybe, you know, but um, honestly, you know, no, but, but, you know, it all depends on your perspective of what a hoe is because, you know, I think everybody's a hoe. Everybody a hoe, you know, and the ones that aren't hoeing, they the weirdest ones. Like the guys that are deprived a lot of sex and girls that are deprived a lot of sex, it comes out in weird ways, you know, because they're not orgasming regularly. So I, that's what I put. You know, you ever notice serial killers? They always the ones that got deprived sex or their yeah. parents or someone yeah. screwed them up. Like, you're nasty, you're evil, you're bad. And they just end up cutting people up. You know, if they just got some pussy regularly. I just want to say that I am a faithful black man. I'm not a hoe, so I don't know what this hoeness come from because I don't know what the fuck. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. A hoe could be loyal. Oh, I don't know about that one, man. A hoe could be loyal. Yeah. There's a difference between a hoe and a stupid hoe. <laughs> You're just making up your own rules right now. I don't even make no sense, man. <laughs> about this. Don't even make no sense. About this. There's a lot of accidental hoes out here, okay? Oh, mind here you, we go, man. Mind, there's a lot of accidental hoes out here. Mind you, right? You know, we can sit here and say, Go Go was you a hoe. And I'd be like, mm, Probably, okay, whatever. You know, but there's a lot of girls out here that literally just got caught up with a bunch of niggas thinking that they love them, wanting to be loved daddy issue shit like that and before they know it they got this crazy body count but they ain't fucking for money they ain't really trying to hoe it's just you know they niggas was finessing maybe they're just you know naive you get what i'm saying and then before they know it they accidental hoe they ain't out here really trying to fuck you know it's just easy to get them because they naive you know that's an accidental hoe you know but you know then there's some girls out here that's just fucking for fuck's sake and they broke now that's a dumb hoe but the problem is people put a girl that has sex for a purpose I need to pay my college tuition I need to pay my bills I need to take care of my children and they fucking for that bread and then they think a girl that's fucking a bunch of niggas for love cause they thought she loved them or thought he loved her they put her over a financial hoe because what love is more important than, than paying your bills I don't, I don't get that so either way all of them are hoes before I rebuttal that, I just I'm gonna give you a chance. I'm gonna forget to say it. Go ahead and uh, stun on the one time you said you was broke. You was, you know, what I'm saying, they was getting picked on. Now you rich all them hoes, man. Show off the outfit real quick, man. You know what I'm saying? You got the titties all out, man. Shake the titties out, man. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She got the titties all out. You know what I'm saying? They finna pop out on the low. You know what I'm saying? I see what you doing, man. You out here, but um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know, man. I feel like hoes cannot be. Cannot be faithful, man. I'm, I'm gonna tell you why. Even a quote unquote accidental hoe, you can sip your tea and everything, man. I'm finna tell you why these, these, uh, you, uh, you know what I'm saying? What it is? That's water. Okay, so she, so she lit, got them one o'clock in the afternoon. I feel you, man. So I don't know. I just feel like a quote unquote accidental hoe. She might get such in the rhythm of being a accidental hoe that when she find a nigga that's loyal, her trust might be so shot that she like, damn, that nigga cheating on me. Shit, I'ma cheat on him for he could cheat on me, or I'ma cheat on him because of cheating on me. You just did this whole analogy on how you accidentally slip on the penis on a banana. Like, what you because, talking about? Because I'm, because I'm a female and I'm friends with all types of hoes. Okay. And I see where their hoedom is coming from. Okay. And I'm in the business. You get what I'm saying? Whether it's stripping or just friends or whatever. You get what I'm saying? Like, 
like for example, um, somebody was telling me, she was like, girl, I met this guy, I really like him, blah, 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 and his dick's so big. I said, well, what does pockets look like? And she was like, what you mean? You know, that's not all. I said, well, if we're talking superficial shit, why is it more appropriate for you to tell me what his dick like, and it ain't appropriate to tell me what his pockets look like? Let's be fair. You get what I'm saying? So let's be realistic about it. If we talk some superficial shit, now if you would've came to me and said, oh, he's so smart, he got this business going, I'd be like, oh, really, what does he do? Blah, 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 I'm glad he's smart, you know, but you talking about his dick. So, you know, like, we're, we're gonna be fair all around about this, you know? You can't be thinking, you know, if you wanna think about a girl's situation and her, her trust being broken and all this other stuff while she became a hoe, then you can't be looking at her. You gotta look at these niggas out here, you get what I'm saying? You know, so my thing is, I'm a female, and like I said, I'm a third generation hoe, okay? And I have friends that are hoes, whether they strippers, porn stars, or not, you know? And I have some accidental hoes, I have some dumb hoe friends, I got some smart hoe friends, I got some boss hoe friends, you get what I'm saying? I ain't never met a bitch that wasn't a hoe. You know, to, to, to be real, uh, on society, I don't think this hoe is a bad thing, I'm using it as a joke to be real, you get what I'm saying? Because I don't believe there's a such thing as hoe. That's what I mean when I say everybody's a hoe. There's no such thing as a hoe. Why can't people do what they want to do? Because at the end of the day, when you see these shows and these females, it's like, well, you're a hoe and you're a whore. You get what I'm saying? It's like, okay, what that got to do with you? Why does my hoedom offend you so much? You get what I'm saying? And then if if I say, well, well, you fuck my man, I'll be like, well, he paid me. So why is that my issue? I'm a single female. He's the one that had a promise to you. I wouldn't fuck anyone, that, man, that was my friend or family's man or something like that. I wouldn't. That's my moral compass. But, you know, the other, you know, the wife or somebody want to pop up and are you fucking my man? Well, if he's a client. But why is that? I didn't do nothing wrong. I'm a single woman. I can fuck who I want to fuck. He's the one that's married. He's the one that we're not going to sit here and call a hoe. We're going to call me a hoe, right? But... I already sat there in the mirror and had that conversation with myself. Go, go, was you a hoe? Maybe. Who, why do I give a fuck? Why do you give a fuck? You know, like, who does it matter? I'm pretty sure you fuck way more bitches than a bitch can fuck niggas, you know? But why does that even matter? You're talking about someone who can't be trusted, a liar, a cheater, an unloyal person. You know, that don't gotta be a hoe. That could be a nigga ratting on your ass and getting you sent to jail. Now these niggas out here, some hoe ass niggas, bitch ass niggas. You get what I'm saying? That I think is more important. Don't hang with a rat before they hang with a girl that has a body count, and that girl might take a charge for you. You know, we're not talking about hoes. We talking about unloyal people. If you hang around a a, a snitch before you hang around a hoe, that's crazy, man. You get you got some issues. That's the case, but I don't no, really hope not. Niggas do it all the time. Niggas do it all the time. You know how? And you know what? Niggas is relationship with dudes. You talking about fruity and gay? You talking about fruity and gay, a nigga will put money on his dude's books, all right? Uh, his dude will come home, give his dude a business, give his dude money, give his dude a place to stay, right? Get him on his feet. That nigga could have shot someone. That's my education. Why don't you get me a place? Why don't you get me and your kids a place? Why don't you, you know, put money on these bills? Now she a hoe. But you just did. So you must be stuck. Is he sucking your dick? Because how come it's bros before hoes? Because that's some gay shit. Y'all in a relationship. You're in a relationship, nigga. You on the phone with him more than me. Use a hoe. Use a gay hoe. Use a gay, gay hoe. Because you sitting here putting money on this nigga books, and you know niggas won't give their baby mama nothing. You know, it's this double standard going on. That's some bullshit. <laughs> I mean, hey, man, I don't, I don't hang around niggas that I hang around snitches. I don't hang around niggas that I don't treat females right. I don't hang around niggas that be getting their booty popped by other females. You know what I'm saying, man? Well, you so, wouldn't know if they got their booty popped. Hey, none of your business. <laughs> hey, I'm a, none of your business. That's none of my... I don't want to... If my homeboy here getting his booty popped, I do not... Hey, if you if you listen to this, you my homeboy. Yeah, hey, hey, don't text me. Don't, don't text me and be like, hey, bro, you know I got my booty popped. Hey, bro, don't, don't text me that shit, bro. Please don't do that. Um, I feel like, no, a lot, I feel like niggas in general talk about 
vagina, you know, a lot. You know, niggas who get it. And that's the thing. Like, that's why niggas call it locker room banter. That's what niggas do. Like, niggas get around their homeboy, locker room banter. That's what niggas call it. All right, that's what it was deemed about a couple years ago. When niggas go to the gym, when niggas go to the gym, and you know what I'm saying, they be in the locker room, don't they? That's too much talking, but naked in this goddamn gym. That's what I'm talking about. That gay shit, put money on niggas' books, and getting them businesses, and talking with your dick style and shit. Locker rooms about some pussy. Go get some pussy. Stop it. Let's not act like. Let's not, that's not like if females are so mature and y'all don't be in these group chats wilding. Like, I've seen females group chats and they are disgusting. The things y'all be sending each other. You in, Are you not in any female group chats where y'all be... I don't do it. Oh, really? You don't do it, huh? Because that's not what turns me on. Like, oh, girl, his dick is big. How big is his pockets? I, I want to know, is you, is you a dumb hoe? Okay, I, I see where your mind state is at. I see where your mind... You, it's, it's on another level. I see where you're coming from. I see where you're coming from. I see you Do he pay from. five times a day? What's he did? I see where you're coming from. You know, I don't want to hear that. <clears throat> I won't even answer that phone. I don't even answer a phone call if I know that nigga's going to call me and say, what you doing? Mm. I don't even answer them texts. I see where you're coming from. Well, when you're doing, I guess, like, let's, let's go into porn real quick. When you are doing a scene, always another question I always wonder about porn stars is it ever enjoyable? Because I know you got to pause, do this, do that. Have you ever did a scene and you was like, wow, that was like some great sex? Or was it too much stopping yeah. and pausing? Oh, yeah. Yeah? I, don't, I wouldn't do something that I don't enjoy. Hmm. You know, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm in love with being a porn star because, I mean, this is a platform to do bigger and better things, you know, and which I am, you know, with producing and all the other bookings that I do and things like that, you know, um, advocating for sex workers' rights and things like that. Um, would I say like, oh, I would do this forever and I just like, I'm in love with this. It's a job, you know, you shouldn't be in love with a job. A job is a job. You work a job and you go into the next phase of your life. But um, if I didn't enjoy the scene, you know, if I, if it was, if I don't enjoy it, then that means that I'm not, that it, I just like it. And if I'm just liking it, I'm going to stop it. Like if a guy's doing something to my body that I've asked him not to do or I don't like it or it hurts or I'm just like, it's not right I'll stop it you can't pay me enough to do something to my body that I don't want to have done what are things like that where it's just like nah I don't want that happening I don't do anal you don't I'm not against anal I've tried it you know I want to I wish I was that girl to be like you know I wish I was that girl but I can't get past the pain of it Mm. to enjoy it so, you know, they'll, they'll throw money at me. Well, you can make this much money or I'll give you this much money. I even put a bid online years ago just to see how much people would pay for my first anal. And it got up to like $25,000. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it, you know, just because I'm not going to sit there and have somebody do something to my body that I don't like. You know, that's like, I I'm a, feel like I'm being raped almost, yeah. you know, like. You know, just lay there and let someone abuse, assault me, mm-hmm. like, and just take it for, you know, that, now that's, that's, that's another level of hope that I'm just not willing to go to, you know. Um, I don't do gang bangs. Now, personally, I, have I had threesomes, foursomes, fivesomes in my personal life? Yes, and I choose those people. But do I ever want to walk on a set and there's five niggas I don't know that's about to hit me off? No. I wouldn't do ghetto gaggers. I'm not into white boys calling me all types of names and putting fried chicken in my ass. Like, I, I ain't into that. You know, and there's no price that's going to make me into that. So, no, any scene that I do, I enjoy it to an extent, you know. And I've had a couple guys, I was like, damn, you know. Like, I, I might, you know, I might have, you know. But, but, you know, no, I don't do things I don't like, you know. They're all enjoyable in their own way. Imagine being so much of a coon that you let a white boy call you like a like a nigger bitch or something like that while y'all having sex. That's crazy. Like that you bring it up. Like I've seen scenes and had like a Confederate flag shirt on. They'd be like, "Oh, you you you're giving good head, you nigger bitch." And I'm like, "Did, did he just really say it? like that's crazy? You gotta be top notch coon." I had a customer for three years. He was like my sugar daddy for three years, and God rest his soul, he's dead now. He's old, and um, I didn't kill him, but he was old, and um. He got real drunk one day, he was Italian, real drunk one day, and he came to a club I was working at, 
and I was too busy to talk to him. And and I was really young, so I probably was like dissing him a little bit. And um and he got drunk and he walked over and he was like, nigger bitch. He said nigger bitch. And the two guys, it was a white guy and a black guy I was talking to, they stood up and they carried him out the club and I never talked to him again. He cried, he apologized, he said he was drunk, but three years down the drain because I don't play that shit. My baby daddy white and he know I don't play that shit. Yeah, that's some, that's some, like, that's crazy. I think got drunk and thought it was. You always thought I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already look at, I call, I already look at clear people like they strange anyway. Like, they don't get it any fucking way, you know. I am, you know, my baby dad was my best friend before we had a kid. And, you know, we're not together or anything like that. But on some real shit, like, you know, I like black men. I like them off the boat, gorilla looking, fucking 50 cent, give it to die trying type dudes. Like, I like them. You know, they don't have to be that big or whatever, but I, I like them straight off the boat, right? And, um, you know, but I just kind of look at them like they don't understand. Like, they won't under they won't understand. So, for you to go that far, yeah. never, never, <laughs> never. No, I feel that. I feel that. Throw the cracker away. Never. That's crazy. I think, I think he got junk. That was the Jim Crow days, man. That's that's crazy. He really felt that comfortable to say that in front of people, too. It was in front of, like, a whole bunch of people. Well, he was drunk. It was two guys I was talking to, and he kept <laughs> trying to get my attention. He was like, he was really, he's older. He's really, really drunk. And, you know, and that's not an excuse to me. Yeah. You know, I wish that I would have forgave him. I knew that he didn't mean it, and I wish he would. I think he knew it would get my attention, mm-hmm. and I wish I would have forgave him before he died, but I held that grudge until he died. Mm. That's crazy. Um, I guess before we get out of here, we can get to a couple fan questions, and now uh, we get out of here. Um, fan yes, there's fan questions. You know? What are we live? No, we're not live. I got these before we we, we did on air or whatever. Let me hit the blood. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know you have fans, right? I mean, I don't know why you. So you gotta think how many like perverts it is out there, and like niggas that just watch you on daily. Oh no, they probably are definitely perverts. But I mean, that's neither here nor there. That's, that's neither here nor there, man. Um, all right. So first one comes comes from uh, at Camo Jack Management. He says, "Can you marry a nigga with a small wee wee?" Is he rich? Um, no specif no specification on that. I could in certain circumstances. Yes, I could. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is MVP says. Ask her, will she work with the body? I have worked with the body. Oh, you have? Okay. Um, everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of people are asking, um, somebody said, I would never forget the time she fucked that puppet. Ask her about that one. So, <laughs> <laughs> then also somebody told me. I still get that from years ago. Somebody told me to tell you to skedaddle. That was pretty funny. Um, so <laughs> skedaddle. That's the puppet phrase. That's his phrase. Get fucking daddle. Shout out to Peanut Live, man. That's, that's a legend. Peanut right Live, yeah. Actually, we were trending on X videos like a few weeks ago. That's we were hilarious. like number one trend. I don't know why all of a sudden it popped back up like that. But it's classic. It's a classic yeah, scene. It was, right it was fun, and people asked me the dumbest question about that. They said, how did it feel? That's hilarious. <laughs> the puppet does not have a dick, people. I did not fuck a puppet. I had someone with a pillow attached to his hand patting my pussy the whole time. Okay? That's hilarious. That's it's a skit. It wasn't a porn. It was a skit. Shout out to Peanut Live. Um, Creasy says, "Wow, a true legend. I've been watching her since I was young, man. Her solo shit is the best." So, I guess he just shouting you out right there. You know. Thank you. Um, let me see. Uh, <laughs> HFM ask ask if her name means automatic consent. Oh, go go. Fuck, fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to I will, I, I will no. You can try me. Try me, motherfucker. Uh seven E L seven says, ask her if she looking for male talent, I will smash. Of course. I'm always looking for male talent. They can email me at go go fuck me triple X at yahoo.com and my assistant will set it up if you you know okay, so these guys, if you got Six inch dicks, no. You're average, no. And if you have a belly that goes over the penis, how am I going to shoot that? Hold on, so you got to have a penis like length requirement to smash you? In a video, yeah. For angle purposes. 
purposes. We got to see the dick go in and out. And I got a lot of ass. Mm. So if it's short, you just see just you pumping. You know, we got to see it come in and out. It doesn't have to be that long. I'm doing it like it's supposed to be that long. But and then with the angles, you can't have this big old belly. We can't get you know our angles. I got a little. I got a lot of big belly dudes thinking that they could do porn. Um. All right, I, I don't know if I should do this or not, but I had somebody text me and say, "Hey, when you interview her, call her in the middle, call me in the middle of the interview, so I can ask her a personal question." Um, I don't know how this is gonna go, but why not, man? Let's let's let's, let's go ahead and do it, man. Let's, let's yeah, let's hit the blast. It's the last question. <laughs> oh, let's see if we pick up the phone. I hope we pick up the phone. That'd be really funny. Um, all right, the phone is ringing. Uh, calling uh Cam Davis right now. Let's see if he picks up the phone. Um. Oh man, I don't think he's gonna pick up the phone. I guess he missed his shot. Uh, damn. Oh, well, Cam Davis. I actually know this person right here. I didn't know anybody else, but I actually personally know this nigga right here. That's why he texted me up. No, no, no. I, I know him. He's he's probably something wild. I already know how this nigga is. But um, cause his question was, he said, uh, hey, bro, ask her. He said, tell Gogo how can I fuck her. And he said, never mind. Let me just call up and ask some shit. So I tried to call him. He picked up the phone. You messed up. Um. <laughs> Um, so yes, anything else you want to say before we get out of here, Gogo? Join my OnlyFans. <laughs> OnlyFans.com slash Gogo Fuck Me Triple X. Um, you know, they can email me, Gogo Fuck Me Triple X at Yahoo.com. And I love all my fans. Shout out to you, Eric, for, uh, you know, this interview. It was a lot of fun. You know, I usually don't have young boys, you know, interview me. Do how, some serious shit. This is fun. How old do I look? Twelve. I look twelve. That's what <laughs> I look real young like that for real. I need a, I need an ID to make sure we just. <laughs> That's hilarious. I look twelve. We just gonna go with that, man. You just uh, you just got hit on by a twelve year old boy. So uh, I just want to let you know that right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? Fans, I know y'all watching. Oh, my. 